Love is love. Adi yo. most wonderful video of the year. 2019 favorites. I've legitimately been looking forward to filming this video for the entire year, so I'm very excited today. I hope I don't talk too fast throughout this video. Probably will, just knowing me. But yeah, as the title and the tradition would imply, today's video is going to be my best of 2019. I'm just gonna go through all the makeup that I fell in love with this year. I tried to confine these favorites to only things I tried out for the first time or were like were released in 2019. So of course, a lot of my favorites this year were things I've had for a long time and I've continued to love. Those will not be in this video. It's pretty much just all like new things I tried for the first time in 2019. So, so yeah, that's a little clarification I want to make. But yeah, I have it all organized into categories. I was pretty picky with what I put in here, but everything in here I'm sure you've already seen before. These are just things I fell in love with and have become like staple products in my collection in 2019. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. This year has been one of the best of my life and I have you guys to thank for a lot of that happiness. So I hope you will continue to stick along for 2020 and I'm excited to see where this new year and new decade, holy oh. new decade will take us. And without further ado, let's get into the favorites. There's a lot of them. It's crazy to think that at the beginning of this year, Dewey was like not my thing. <laughs> oh, how far we've come. My pores are screaming. So I'm gonna start off with like the face complexion products because those are the things I changed most, I think, in 2019, but also I found some staples that I've just been loving on. Two Dewey staples I have to mention, the Glossier Future Dew. This I've been using almost every day as like the last step of my skincare routine right after sunscreen. So I guess it's kind of like a primer for me because it does set down this really beautiful glowy base for foundation. I've also been using this as like a highlighter substitute on bare skin. Or sometimes I use this as a cream converter, so if I apply a highlighter, a powder highlighter that looks a little bit too stark or powdery on my face, I can take a little bit of this, sheared it onto a beauty blender, pat it on top of the powder highlighter, and it just melts it perfectly into the skin without disrupting the foundation I have underneath it. It's just perfection. The power that that has, the intelligence that that has, the clearance that that has, the access that that has, the influence that that has, the profile that that has, the international implications that that This formula, honestly, revolutionary. Emily Weiss, I bow down. I was really worried that this product was going to be a gimmick just because of the way that it was described, but this has changed the game for me. It's like a multi-purpose genius product and I, I cannot get enough of this. Kind of in the same vein, this was not released in 2019, but I tried it for the first time in 2019. You saw the Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This I started using at the beginning of the year and this has become like an almost daily part of my routine as well. It's basically like a slightly tinted liquid highlighter slash dew product. I love swiping this on top of any type of foundation that I feel like needs a little bit more life to it. Subtle enough that it doesn't give you that like liquid highlighter all over your face look where it doesn't emphasize texture or every single pore on your face because by god I have a lot of them. But it just brings that like lifelike sheen back to your face that foundation can sometimes take away if you do go in with more of a matte foundation. Also beautiful as a liquid highlighter and sometimes if I'm feeling particularly good about myself I'll pretty much just put this one on all over my face instead of foundation so as kind of like a coverage substitute and it really just brings this lifelike extremely dewy appearance to your face but it doesn't break up throughout the day either. I'm mentioning this right after Future Dew because these two products I feel like are kind of confusing when you first get them like what is this supposed to be what does it do but it's really like this multi-purpose thing that doesn't really have a specific use it just can make everything look better. I am so powerful. My mind. I tried out a lot of new foundations this year. Only two of them managed to just like capture my heart. What I'm wearing today is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. This became my new holy grail this year. It's everything I've ever wanted in a foundation. Long wearing, luminous finish, but it's not too like greasy looking, if that makes sense. Very thin, lightweight feeling as well, so it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a heavy, heavy coating of makeup. Usually the first thing I do when I get home is like take off my entire face of makeup just because I've like felt the makeup and the weight of it on my face throughout the day. This, I don't really mind wearing. It just feels like such a nice lightweight layer of even medium coverage that you can build up if you want to, but it just looks so skin-like and so perfect. And I just think they did an amazing job with this formula. I am in the shade 210N and it is my perfect match. And then kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, this doesn't really do the same effect as the ABH foundation, but I love it for other reasons. YSL All Hours Foundation, not a new release from 2019, but I did try it for the first time this year. It's a really, really good formula. It's not my everyday wear. I pretty much wear this one when I need a foundation that's gonna last throughout the entire day. If I know I have like a special event, 
event or just any type of thing where I know I need my face to last and look good throughout that lasting period. This is my go-to for that because it's truly the most long wearing foundation I own. Even though it is more on the matte full coverage side, I feel like it does wear really nicely throughout the day and it's a very thin layer, kind of like the Anastasia foundation. So it doesn't bother me to wear it throughout the day. It's so thin and I do like to have my foundation looking a little bit dewier. So this one, even though it is a matte finish, I like that it plays really well with like setting sprays and more luminous products on top of it to get it to that finish I like and still stays very long wearing. So these two were really the only foundations I was consistently just going back to for the superstars of the year for me. When it comes to concealer, of course, my favorite concealer that I own is the Too Faced Born This Way. This I've been using since like last year. So the only new concealer that I tried this year that really made it into like favorite status was the Cover FX Power Play Concealer. This surprised me a lot. I've really just like not been super impressed with most concealers ever since trying the Too Faced one. So I've honestly just kind of like not been trying new things because every time I try something, I'm like, yeah, this is fine, but it's not the Too Faced Born This Way. This is really, really pretty. I'm wearing it on my under eyes right now. I feel like this, while it is full coverage, it's not a very drying formula. So it can blend out to be a very nice thin layer of coverage and that I can really appreciate. I feel like Tarte Shape Tape, though it was like one of the most full coverage concealers I owned, which was sometimes useful, thicker formula, kind of harder to blend and definitely looked very apparent on the under eyes. This one blends really seamlessly into the under eyes and I feel like it just is a very versatile concealer. It plays really well with pretty much every foundation I've tried it with. Whereas sometimes for other concealers, it's like kind of trial and error. Sometimes it doesn't work with a certain formula. This one I can always count on to work with everything so whenever i'm testing a new foundation i usually use this concealer with it because i know it's just going to work out but yeah this was pretty much the only like concealer fave of the year which is interesting to me obviously i was using this pretty much every day <laughs> my favorite powder of the year was like no powder honestly i kind of stopped using setting powder all over my face or at least scaled back my use of setting powder a lot and all my favorite powders of the year were not new releases so hourglass veil setting powder glossier powder and the charlotte tilbury airbrush fox finish these were all things i mentioned in last year's favorites video so i didn't want to mention them again. Really the only new favorite powder that I tried out this year was the Fenty Beauty Lavender setting powder. Not on my face. I really really hate the Pro Filter setting powder formula all over the face. I think it just looks so so heavy but something about this formula looks amazing on the under eyes. I have the lavender shade which is pretty much like an almost stark white color but it has a little bit of like a lavender purple tinge to it which I didn't think I was going to enjoy but it's such a finely milled really velvety smooth powder and this looks airbrushed on your under eyes. The little bit of lavender tinge to it also helps to really brighten up the under eye area. So I feel like it can give you that nice like brightened effect that baking can do without you having to bake with it. I just like to take a kind of like fluffier brush like this one and just do like a very, very light setting on the under eyes with this powder. Um, and just that tiny amount of light dusting keeps everything in place because it's so like finely milled, almost like chalky smooth. It doesn't create this like very heavy crepey texture because it's really the thinnest layer. So this powder was definitely my favorite for the under eye of the year and the other three that I just mentioned amazing for all over the face if I do feel like setting my foundation which I generally have not felt like setting my foundation and then to cap off the complexions category I want to talk about my two favorite setting sprays of the year the first one is not an actual setting spray it's just bougie skin mist at its finest the first Ollie rose gold skin mist this I really did not want to like because it's um there's gold flakes in it that says enough but it's the most beautiful fine dewy finish mist in the world. <laughs> While it doesn't really prolong the wear of your makeup, I don't feel like it does anything adverse to your makeup either. And it just really adds that extra layer of like meltiness right into your skin. Whatever powder products you use, which today I used a powder highlighter and pretty much all the powder cheek products. And it just melds everything in, makes everything look so seamless and skin-like. Is it a wholly unnecessary product? Yes, kind of. There are definitely like less expensive things you can get that do a similar effect. But bitch, I'm a spray gold flakes on my face and I'm gonna enjoy it. And then the other love of my life, the ABH Dewy Set. I don't love the mist of this one. It's a little bit less fine than I would like it to. I like my setting mist to be like, just like a light shh, little shower. This one can be a little bit aggressive, especially if I don't hold it far enough away from my face. But I love the effect that this one gives. Again, dewiness, but it doesn't look greasy. It doesn't make your skin look overly shiny, which I feel like can be a thing. I used to think like, no, there's no such thing as too much dew. There is. Yeah, dewy girl dream. Good setting spray overall awesome all right moving into the eyes category because wow it's it's a lot actually it was not as many palettes as i thought i was going to select for this category but still obviously eyeshadow is still my favorite like item of makeup even though i have been dabbling into the browns as of lately um i still have quite a few favorites i want to share so the biggest surprise of the year honestly for me were the kaja beauty bento trios 
<laughs> I have two of them right now. The full shimmer one I own is the Orange Blossom, and then I have one of the matte trios as well called Chocolate Dahlia. Slightly nondescript looking shimmers in the pan, but I've come to realize that these are some of the most unique, um, like special formula of shimmer shades I've ever seen. While they do have a little bit of a base pigment to them, they have this like multi-dimensional glitter packed all throughout, and it just picks up so differently on the eyes. Even in this swatch, I don't think it really conveys how beautiful these look on the eyes because they look so multi-dimensional. And $21 for each of these trios, seemed expensive to me at first. I've gotten so much use out of these two, particularly Chocolate Dahlia, just because it is very versatile and it's just pretty much like an eye look in a single thing. So I hope that they come out with more shade options of these because I really, really love this formula a lot and maybe even like a bigger palette version with more of these. That would be cool. Okay, I need to not swatch things in this section because I will be covered in swatches in like five seconds. As kind of disappointed as I've been with the way that Anastasia Beverly Hills as a brand has been going this year, I gotta give props and and shout out my favorite palette of the year, the ABH Jackie Ina palette. Um, I was just very happy to see this palette coming out in the first place, but I think this color scheme is beautiful. Just put together this really amazing curated color scheme that I think works for so many different people. But I'm wearing this on my eyes right now. I have Zam on my lid. It's just this magical rose gold kind of bronzy shimmer that does everything I need it to. <laughs> Ginger, Credit, Lituation, and Soleil are also on my eyes right now. But I've done so many different looks with this one, and I think this can produce such a diverse array of different things, whether you want those like richer tone neutrals or if you want colorful shades, this can do it all. Also, the formula is just on point. There are like four different formulas in here. And I think it's like one of the last ABH palettes where I've just been like, this is perfection. They really thought this one through. It just makes me very excited to use. Mel Gemini Dude finally got my hands on this earlier in the year. I've just like lusting over this ever since it was released. Of course, I like tracked mine down. And then like, I think a month or so after I finally got a hold of this one, they released in Sephora. And I was like, are you kidding me? But I am really happy to see them getting that opportunity because Melt is another one of those brands that I feel like they release things with purpose and with pride and just so much inspiration behind each release and it just makes me very excited to use it. Gemini palette has been my favorite for the reason that it has the neutrals that I've been really like dabbling more into this year and just falling back in love with as well as these beautiful green shades. It's grungy, it's, it's kind of like a moodier palette with a little bit more depth to it and as a result I just feel like the looks this creates are incredible. I love this and the formula is always top notch with Melt. I have found my new favorite indie brand that is Kaleidos Makeup. Not only is it just like a lovely company run by wonderful people who are just so kind. I think that the artistic vision behind these palettes is just, especially the Futurism palettes, is just insane. Futurism 3, this is my personal favorite from their permanent line. I love this kind of very unique take on cool tones. I also really like their limited edition Futurism palettes from summer this year. Futurism Neon, this is like a Sour Skittles acid trip dream of a palette. And I think they did a really great job with Neon Brights, which is kind of very hard to formulate. And then Futurism 5, Electric Turquoise, this is such a unique color scheme. I'm wearing these two blue shades here on my inner corner right now as part of this eye look. It is such an interesting color scheme. I wouldn't have thought to put an orange with these, but it just it inspires me, it speaks to me, it sparks joy. These features and palettes are amazing and definitely one of my favorite palettes I tried this year. I've been long on the hunt for the perfect yellow eyeshadows and ColourPop has filled that void for me this year. I'd been wanting a yellow monochromatic palette for so long and I did a full review video of this one. I loved all the looks I came up with with this one I, and I was worried about like a monochromatic yellow palette being very like one note. All the looks you do with this one will end up looking like they came from this palette if it's the only palette that you use in the look but I think there's a certain beauty to that and there's a unity within these shades and it just all works together in a very cohesive way. So so I found my favorite yellow matte here called Sweet Spot. This is the best yellow I've ever tried. And everything else in here just makes me very happy. And it's, yellow is a very happy color for me. So I just love having this palette. It's very fun for me to use. The Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dream Palette. This was also kind of a sneak attack favorite for me, but, but I'm so glad that I actually did pick it up. I think the pictures really just do not do it justice. I first saw it on Instagram and I was like, okay, it's like a pretty color scheme, but it's not anything I need. But seeing this in stores and getting to touch it and feel the textures and just really like get to know the color scheme in person, that was what inspired inspired me to pick it up and I'm so glad that I did because this has become like one of my favorite new eyeshadow formulas and for me Luna Beauty is a brand that I'm very excited for in 2020. Again done plenty of looks with this one I've enjoyed how everything has come out and even though it is definitely more of like the pink tone vibe I think there are so many different things you can do with this one. I love that they added in the blues in there like I would not have thought of that and just overall like excellent formula excellent execution packaging the aesthetics the inspiration behind this I think it's all very present and throughout the little details of this palette and the Moonspell palette I just think you can see such a love for makeup that Manny really has. And I like this very much, so this was a very solid release for me. Then one of the most fun releases of the year for me was the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. This, 
it's just pure pure cuteness didn't really have any like pastel matte shades in my collection especially a rainbow assortment of pastel mattes so i was very excited about this one and you know what like while it's not the exact same formula as sugar pills bigger palettes i still think that they did an awesome job with this they're very vibrant very pigmented they do not swatch well but i don't think any like pastel mattes like this would swatch well especially because these shades are so unique um i feel like it's just been such a fun palette to work with and very inspiring for me so really like this a lot i've been obsessed with glittery eye toppers this year. I'm sure you are tired of hearing me talk about this one, but ColourPop Super Shock in the shade Ritz, my favorite thing ever. It's a basically like clear, very dimethicone textured eyeshadow. So it's a clear base, goes on pretty much sheer and glossy on the eyelids, but then it has this glittery silver reflect throughout it that just makes it look like you have glossy, wet looking eyelids. It's perfection. Also want to mention the Moira Lucent Cream Shadow in the shade Jupiter. I wasn't sure I was gonna love this one just because it is a cream texture, but it's honestly pretty much the exact same formula as the ColourPop Super Shocks. Um, but these ones have some even more fun duochrome flips. It's kind of like Ritz, it's got like a clear base to it, but this one has a little bit more of like a pinky green duochrome shift and it catches the light in such a beautiful way. I'll try and flash any looks I have with any of the eye stuff onto on screen so you can see how they look in action. Jupiter is just like pure perfection right there. And then for brows, I didn't really try anything super new this year or super new that I really liked a lot except for this Makeup Revolution Pro Volume and Sculpt Brow Gel. This is so good. It's the only thing I have in my brows right now. I feel like this is everything that the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel wanted to be because it is that same like very pigmented brow formula where you can pretty much just do your brows only using this but the brush is so small and it has a little bit more of like a fluffiness to it so you can really create those natural hair strokes and control the product a lot better than the dip brow gel. It also provides a little bit of hold so I feel like this is the only thing I really need for my brows. I just brush it through, kind of like feather it through with the spoolie. It creates this like nice feathery hair stroke brow without looking like too much or looking too like block brow-esque which I feel like I can really get there sometimes with pomades. So besides ABH dip brow, this is the only thing I've been using on my brows and I love it so much. Also. Soap. Didn't truly live until I put soap in my brows. Moving on to cheek products, I have uh, a lot. <laughs> Cover FX Monochromatic Duos. This I've been saying all year these would be in my 2019 favorites video. I'm wearing the bronzer duo right now. This is the Sunkiss Bronze Duo. And then I also have the Spice Cinnamon Blush Duo. I love both of these. They're such a unique formula. Again, I think Cover FX is a brand that has consistently released really well thought out things rather than doing like quantity over quality and i'm not somebody who even likes shimmery bronzers i would rather if i was going to go for like a dewier look i would rather just use a cream rather than a shimmery powder bronzer this has really introduced me to the concept of draping and just getting a little bit of extra dimension out of my cheek products so i'll go in with this matte one as my like base bronzer and then just drape a little bit of this shimmery one on top and it just adds a little bit of extra life to the face and just gives you a really interesting effect. You get so many different looks out of these duos and I just think they're a really, really great release. Another excellent powder cheek product from this year was the Fenty Beauty Sunstalker Bronzer line. My favorite is the shade Shady Biz, but this is just a really, really great bronzer formula. It's really hard to create a very unique formula, I feel like, for matte powder bronzers, but they somehow did it with this one. Just nice and buildable. I don't like my bronzers to be too pigmented because at that point they can be like patchy and sometimes really, really hard to work with, which is not a fun time. But these are just like the perfect amount of pigmentation where it still shows up as this nice like diffusion of warmth across your face but it's easy to blend easy to work with not too warm but not too like ashy or cool toned either very like smooth formula i guess is how i would describe it my favorite cream liquid highlighter in the world glossier play nightshine liquid highlighter um in the shade pale pearl of course i don't know what to say dude i've talked about this so much throughout the year beautifully blinding but it also melts into the skin because it is a cream to liquid texture but it also doesn't like emphasize all the shit that i don't want it to be emphasizing it's just an excellent formula glossier Wonderful. You know, I was not gonna mention non-2019 releases or non-things I tried in 2019 products, but like, ABHM Reezy, man. <laughs> the only highlighter I truly ever wanna use on my face for the rest of my life. I'm wearing it on my cheekbones today. It's just the best formula ever. Don't at me. It's just perfect. Obviously, I've been dabbling a lot more into cream cheek products this year, and one of the standout products for me have been the Glossier Cloud Paints. I think these are a perfect way to introduce yourself to cream cheek products if you haven't really been able to get into that yet, because they're so attainable and easy to use. They're a little bit pigmented, so you do want to control the amount that you use, but I just kind of squirt them onto the back of my hand, take a little stippling brush, and just like dab 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 dab, and they're practically blended out for you. <laughs> my two favorite shades are Storm and Dusk, and if you've been with me for a bit you know that i like mixing storm with a lip gloss to add a little bit of extra dewy effect to the cheekbone but if you don't want that these just straight up are an excellent blush formula two more favorite powder highlighters the first one is the kaja mochi glow highlighter i have the shade toy alien 
just a really lovely formula. It's a powder highlighter, but it doesn't really have like glitter in it. It's just a straight up sheen on the face. It can be like a very nice subtle glow. But I feel like if you build it up, it gets to a really nice like blinding point, but because it doesn't have glitter in it, it's not aggressive or foiled or icy on the face. Also really enjoyed from the Kaleidos Space Age collection, the Ray Rider highlighter. Of course, I love the most basic shade in the entire collection of colorful highlighters, but it's just a beautiful like pearly champagne shade works so nicely such a smooth formula as well i just feel like this looks so so beautiful all blended out on the cheekbone and one of those few powder highlighter formulas i feel like sits so beautifully on the skin and doesn't sit on top of the skin it just like melts right in there and looks like a really natural beaming glow. I was really pleasantly surprised this year by the Huda Beauty Tantor bronzer. Of all brands, I feel like Huda Beauty would not come out with like cream cheek products. I feel like her brand is very much about like full beat, full face makeup. And like the cream cheek products and what they kind of, the vibes that they go for don't really align with Instagram makeup that I feel like Huda Beauty's brand is oriented around. It is a little bit more pigmented than your typical cream bronzer, but it is such a nice smooth formula, blends out really easily, gives you that nice amount of warmth to your skin. But again, like Tonally, I think she did a great job at this collection. Call me basic and boring, but um, this blush from Kylie Cosmetics in the shade Pink Power. I feel ashamed for loving this so much because it's such a basic pink shade, but sometimes I think the basics are just the best. I've just been really loving basic blush shades that work with everything. This is one of my favorite blushes to reach for just because I know it's gonna work. It's a really soft, creamy formula as well, and I feel like, again, melts into the cheeks. What more do I have to say? It's perfect. <laughs> For lip favorites, I really don't have a ton, just because I, I kind of sticked with what I already knew that I loved this year, which was ColourPop Ultra Satins. So I have four new lip favorites to share. Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Vanilla, or any flavor, honestly. It's the formula that matters for me. This is the most beautiful, like, silky, nourishing lip balm I've ever tried. The vanilla one I have is barely used just because I've finished up my entire berry one first and I've just started on this one. I also really like this one sometimes as like a lip gloss on top of my lipstick if I'm feeling kind of frisky and I want extra hydration. Best, best lip balm. Fenty Beauty gloss balms of every variety have been my favorite this year. I love all the shades, but Fussy has been my new like actual favorite. Still think I like Fenty Glow a little bit more, but Fussy I'm wearing right now, I think it gives you that perfect amount of like little extra pink. So if I feel like my nude lipstick is a little bit too on the brown tone side, this can just really add a little bit of extra pink that I'm looking for and it's just so good. The other thing I'm wearing on my lips right now is the ColourPop uh, Luxe Liquid Lipstick from the Disney Designer Collection and this is the shade Beast. I wasn't really expecting to like this formula. I would say it's kind of a cross between the Ultra Satin Lips and the Ultra Blotted Lips in that it's sheerer than the Ultra Satin Lips but it still has a bit more pigmentation than the Ultra Blotted Lips and it's also a bit more hydrating. It's the perfect like pink tone nude shade for me. I just like how it looks on the lips. Really awesome formula, beautiful color as well. And then I've also gotten back into kind of like traditional bullet style lipsticks. Um, this is the Ciate Wonder One lipsticks and these were one of my favorite formulas of the year. Kind of like a more hydrating cream lipstick formula but they have they have a decent amount of pigmentation to them. I think the shades that they came out with are beautiful. So this is my personal favorite. It's called Wanderlust and it's just a really nice kind of like peachier pink warm toned nude. If you have like chronic chapping like me this will be awesome for you. I have a few skincare favorites as well. I've gotten so much into skincare this year and I owe it all to like Korean skincare and also skincare YouTube. I've gotten into watching that stuff. So I've just gotten a lot more passionate about taking care of my skin. Laneige Cream Skin Toner has become my favorite toner. This is my second bottle. If you have dry skin like me, especially sensitive skin, this will be your holy grail because it's so calming and so plumping and hydrating and beautiful. Good toner. That's all I have to say. Two serums I've really been enjoying. The first is the 4th Ray Beauty Radiate Vitamin C Elixir. I've used quite a bit of this one. This I've been using every day in the morning. And then at nighttime, my favorite serum is the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow AHA Resurfacing Night Serum. These together have done a great job of, this one diminishes my dark spots and my acne scars, which I have quite a bit of. This one helps with controlling breakouts and getting rid of my texture. And then the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. This I thought was gonna be just like a hyped up a thick lotion. It's so nourishing. I think if you have dry skin, again, you will love, love, love this. I bought the tester size. It's $25 as opposed to the $50 full size just because I don't use it every single night. It's more of like a once or twice a week thing for me. It is so ridiculously hydrating on the skin and I love this one. And I want to close off my 2019 favorites with my favorite makeup look and my favorite video of the year. I think my favorite makeup look that I posted this year, either this flowery one, the Mike Tyson face tattoo, <laughs> as I affectionately have called it, or my last Halloween look, the execution of Anne Boleyn. That was such a fun time for me. <laughs> and then probably my favorite video of the year was my surgery video. That was just, took a lot of courage and I put a lot of my heart into that and a lot of vulnerability. And um, I think it was one of the 
greatest things and the most and the thing I was like most proud of to release this year. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed my 2019 favorites. Thank you so much for all the love and support and everything you've given me in 2019. It has been such an amazing year and I'm thankful for every second of it. I also wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported my merch this year. I can't wait to see where that takes me. Thank you to everyone who supported this channel. Thank you to all my friends, Nisa, Hannah, Abby, Georgia. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on names right now, but there's so many other people that I wanna say thank you to. Thank you to Mackenzie and Fullscreen for believing in me. I I feel like I'm accepting an award now and I think I just need to end the video. <laughs> so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed now alone. Also follow me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this posted in the new decade. And if you made it to the very end of this video, you beautiful people, you get the bonus meme. Love you. Bye. All right, that's it. That's a wrap on 2019. Maybe she's born with it. Or maybe, just maybe, it's mental illness, isn't it?